and the prison story is so huge. It is like a huge elephant in the national room. I mean, one out of every 138 U.S. citizens has either been incarcerated or uh, is presently incarcerated. The community needed jobs, and prisons was a very quick fix for um, a huge loss um, in the economy. No one would think that out in Kentucky, um, out that way, that there would be activists or people advocates, people advocating for prison reform and prison rehabilitation. It wasn't as though um, we had plotted out a story we were going to tell about prisons. A prison came to our community. This was a, a very significant moment, the opening day of this prison. We are going back to the on-air room at WMMT studio here at Apple Shop. We're gonna do a uh, holler to the hood this Getting evening. Getting ready for holler to the hood. Yep, phone's probably already ringing. We began doing a hip hop show that was really as kind of a, uh, a shout out to the prison audience, just as a way for this new community to have a voice on our community radio station. What we'll be doing is I'm gonna go on the air talk a little bit just for a moment or two the phone calls will inevitably start coming in hot and heavy here in a minute they just the phone kind of rings off the hook through the whole show the community came to us in the form of letters clearly describing human rights violations and racism within our community's newly built prisons it was all of your worst fears confirmed basically and so it was very galvanizing for me to say, okay, we need to be working on this and we need to pursue this because something's going very wrong. And so we decided that we wanted to make the radio program more focused and more specifically in response to this particular community's needs. And from that, we, we renamed the program Holler to the Hood. Good evening, friends, and welcome to Holler to the Hood. You are listening to WMMT Mountain Community Radio. I'm Amelia, and I'll be your host this evening as we go to 11 o'clock taking phone calls, uh, getting messages from folks, and listening to a little bit of music. We've already got the phone ringing, so let's go ahead and start taking calls right now. Hello, you're live on Holler to the Hood. Hi, my name is Sylvia Malacott. I'm calling from Newport News, Virginia, and my son Antonio Malacott is in Wallens Ridge State Prison, and we just wanted to call and say I love you. I miss you. Those mountains only separate you by distance. They don't separate you in spirit and in heart. And we do wait for you to come home again. And it won't ever really be home again until you're home in there, too. years of the project, we specifically really focused on the state of Virginia and our regional audience. We have a lot of local listeners, um, people who, when they see us, you know, for folks who know who we are, tell us, oh, we've been listening. We heard the call the other night where the little girl called to say goodnight to her daddy, or we heard, you know, respond directly back to what, what's been out on the air. We also reached out to groups in the state of Virginia who had their own databases of contacts, and so we started to expand our, our list of people that we could reach out to for projects. I first heard of them when they did their first, uh, Christmas show about two years ago, when they did the Christmas call-in show. We participated in the call-ins and calling. We had people, families, and, and share that information. And through our organization, we have a lot of members that have loved ones that's incarcerated at the three prisons where their broadcast comes through it. It's grown leaps and bounds so much that the line stays busy. You have to really try to get in there, but that's a wonderful thing. At the same time, that show has always been broadcasting on the web. And so we slowly started to pick up people who would like who were interested in the content who would listen via the internet I think with all of the, the 
technology that we use, we're always trying to figure out the feedback loop that's involved. We don't want people just to be listeners, but we want them to be participants in the creation of the product. And so one way that we've done that is people have uh, been able to call in their stories uh, into the radio show or call our 1-800 line that has an answering machine, or they can actually write their, their script section uh, online and submit it. Okay. Please put on your web and read on the How to the Hood radio. So that's from a, a, one of our prisoner listeners on the radio station. And this is his, uh, this is his poem. And so then all I have to do is uh, go into our uh, our online script writing room and because this will be added to the content the content that helps make up the play you know we don't want people just to listen to content off our website but we want them to be able to type in their story into the website or call our 800 line and record it and then we're taking that content that they've shared with us and putting it into a play that get, then goes out into the community and that people discuss and alter and change we have got uh, Nick here in the studio who is bringing the Thousand Kites update. Uh, he's got announcements of what's coming up in the next few weeks. So when is Thousand Kites coming to a community near your families? We wanted to bring it down in a way that people could really interact and have like face-to-face -face interaction with one another. And so we've invited a bunch of theater people to work with us. Roadside Theater, a series of story circles around um, with with family members of corrections officers and, and communities that have prisons as economic development to kind of access all multiple sides of the story. 3.30 a.m. Prisoner kitchen work is in place. Five am guard. Not one guard, but many. I have one mouth to speak with many voices and I have Two years, and I have heard many stories. I am prisoner. I have one mouth, but speak with many voices. The way we use technology builds connections between people that are far apart from each other, both physically and also a lot of times culturally. Um, and so we have we have the means to connect folks through their voices, through their words, written and otherwise. Um, that that results in finding common ground, finding connections, finding ways to move forward with that common ground. And I just couldn't believe that they would do that. Programs like Nick and Amelia with Holler to the Hood and then with Rose Size bringing attention, um, they're wonderful. Now to answer your question as far as them being in the rural area and and we're here with mostly most of the persons and people that are incarcerated are from the city. So how do we come together? That's a good thing because I believe it should be diverse. It's I believe it is um, our all of our civic duty to assist, uplift, and empower those at a disadvantage. The the thing that we've always used that's helpful is we ask people just to tell their own story. What we want to know is what do you think? Now we want to hear what, what did you think of the play? No, oh, you know it had, it had a lot of good information in it about uh, the point of view from a guard, point of view from the uh, prisoner. You know? When people hear one story, it reminds them of their own story. And it, in some ways, it emboldens and enables them to not to tell their own story, but also it help, in telling their story, sometimes you discover your story. I chose the prisoner part because I actually was a prisoner for six years of my life. So I'm, I'm not proud of it, but I'm not ashamed of it. But I'm living proof that I'm still locked up even though I've been out six years. In order to touch the females or the little girls in the school, you have to have a female point of view also. Would you consider maybe sharing some of the um, 
sharing some of your wisdom, I mean, your words and your experiences. I would ask, like, what are the stories in your community that people don't want to talk about? Like, what's the prison story in your community that people don't want to have a dialogue about? And then what kind of uh, media tools can you use? You might have access to a video camera. I mean, it might be a community radio show. You might have a cable access station. Uh, you might be able to put up something on a website. Uh, but that it would be in a way that was stirring a dialogue. And boy, once you start stirring that dialogue, things will start to happen because people will start to react to it. And then it will just keep building and building. And a lot of times a positive solution comes out of it at the end. Let's